Hello, it's Jermaine from LiveWellZone.com and in today's video I want to talk to you about a topic that is near and dear to my heart which is hysterectomies. Now this is something that the women in my own family have gone through. This is also something that I tend to get emails about and usually those emails are always very heartbreaking to read because it's usually women sharing very uh, difficult and almost traumatic experiences that they've had as a result of a hysterectomy. So. I've been working for a while now to put together this video, the information I'm going to share with you because I do think that it's important for every woman to have more understanding and awareness of her own body and how that relates to hysterectomy. So whether you've already had this operation, whether you're thinking about it, or even if it's not even something that you need at this moment, uh, stick around, watch the whole video. I think you will learn quite a bit that can help you uh, at some point in your life if it becomes relevant, okay? So to set the premise about uh, hysterectomies, the one thing I do want to mention is that in the medical world, the uterus is considered a dormant organ. So outside of pregnancy is considered dormant. So really they see the purpose of uh, the uterus as just there to support a fetus. And if a woman is not pregnant, that organ is deemed almost useless, okay? Um, and this is not my language. This is actually language that is found in some medical texts. There is a video that I'm going to share with you that you can watch to understand you know, where I pulled that language. Okay, so like I said, it's seen as dormant and almost useless, maybe with no real purpose outside of pregnancy. But there was an interesting study that was done in 2000, that was published in 2019. And in that study, they had four different groups of rats. So one group of rats underwent the removal of the uterus. Another one had the removal of ovaries. The other had removal of ovaries and uterus. And then the fourth group of rats had a fake surgery. They never actually took out their organs, okay? So they performed the surgery. After six weeks, they then put the rats through a water maze, okay? And those, uh, those rats basically learned to navigate that maze. And then what they did was they modified the maze. So the maze had uh, specific landmarks in different locations. And so what they started doing was moving and changing some of those landmarks and then seeing how the rats would navigate. The purpose here was to basically look at uh, potentially how the removal of the uterus would affect their cognitive ability and specifically what they call working memory. So they navigated the maze, learned it, once they modified it, then they noticed that the rats that had had their uteruses, the uterus removed, those rats had the most difficulty uh, recognizing and finding the other landmarks that were still left in that maze. So the conclusion of the study was basically that, yes, if you remove the uterus, there is an impact specifically on working memory, okay? Now, the other thing with the study is that um, the professor who led the study, that she actually, she and the graduate student who did the study, there is a video on YouTube, I will share that video with you. You can go watch it, it's very short, it's about three and a half minutes. But in the video, one of the things she pointed out is, even though um, they, they understood, they, they saw that outcome, the next step now is to determine if that impairment of working memory is temporary or permanent. Now, if it's temporary, can we reverse it? Or does this is this something that just sticks around forever? That is the part that the study um, had not yet addressed. And basically, she presented it as something that, was, that they would have to investigate in the future, okay? Now, we can certainly dismiss this study from the perspective that, you know, this was done with female rats, and what happens in female rats is not necessarily what's going to happen with human females. That is a fair argument to make for sure, okay? But I do also want to point out the fact that um, the main hypothesis on which uh, the professor based this study in the first place was that we already know that there is, from an anatomical perspective, there is a connection between the brain and the uterus and ovaries. And so because we already know that anatomically those organs are connected, she wanted to test the hypothesis of if we do a hysterectomy, is there going to be some effect on the brain's ability to perform certain functions, okay? And then to dive into this a little bit more, um, there is something that you've probably heard about called the vagus nerve. It's talked about a lot, especially when we're talking about stress relief and trauma and the parasympathetic nervous system. So 
Uh, the vagus nerve is also known as the wandering nerve and it has inputs to the uterus, okay? Now, the vagus nerve is uh, responsible for basically, the vagus nerve, sorry, is part of the autonomic nervous system, which controls everything that is automatic. So things like our breathing, digestion, um, anything that basically just happens on its own without us having to voluntarily make it happen, that is controlled by the autonomic nervous system. And the vagus nerve is the main uh, nerve in that system, okay? So now we're not talking about female rats anymore. We're talking about uh, the true anatomy of a human female, and we definitely have a connection between the brain and the uterus via the vagus nerve, okay? So then it also begs the question that what happens if we remove the uterus? Uh, what happens if that nerve, for example, potentially gets damaged in some way during surgery? What could be the ramifications? for that woman and also for, again, cognitive and brain function, okay? And then there's also another side effects in here that I came across uh, when it comes to the vagus nerve and hysterectomies, and this one has to do specifically with sexual pleasure, okay? So for women who prefer um, stimulation through the vagina or the cervix, hysterectomies can have a negative effect due to what it could do potentially to your vagus nerve. So I'm gonna actually just read word for word what this paper uh, said and what they said is women whose preferred source of stimulation is vaginal or cervical would be more likely to experience a decrement which means a decrease in sensation and consequently sexual response after hysterectomy because the nerves that innervate i.e stimulate these organs and those nerves are the pelvic the hypogastric and the vagus nerves those nerves are more likely to be damaged or severed in the course of hysterectomy. Again, it says more likely, it doesn't mean, obviously that means it is not automatic, but it is more likely. So once again, if you've had a hysterectomy and you're having um, side effects, specifically when it comes to libido or sexual pleasure, this is something else to keep in mind that it could be as a result of what this paper has described, okay? And then, to kind of wrap this all up, uh, the reason why I even, again, outside of the fact that, you know, there's people in my family who've had hysterectomies, but even the reason that I even felt the need to make this video in the first place was because of an older study uh, that came out in 2013. And this one had to do with basically showing that there is an overuse of hysterectomy. So this was um, a study that was done in Michigan. So over a 10 month period in 2013, um, a team of doctors analyzed the medical records of 3,397 women from 52 hospitals in Michigan. Those women had undergone a hysterectomy for different things like uterine fibroids, uh, uterine bleeding, endometriosis, and pelvic Pain, okay, so they analyzed the medical records and what they found was that basically one in five of those surgeries of those uh, hysterectomies they were considered to be medically unnecessary meaning that there could have been a less invasive uh, alternative treatment that could have helped those women and that they didn't they did not absolutely for a fact they didn't require it from a medical perspective, okay? Also, the study uh, showed that about almost 40% of the women were not offered alternatives prior to the hysterectomy. So this also pointed out the fact that there is actually an underutilization of alternative treatments. And then when I say alternative here, I'm not talking about uh, diet or things like that. I'm just talking about other procedures that your doctor can still perform, but that would be less radical less invasive. This is all highlighting the fact that you know, not that you don't have to have a hysterectomy, but that if you are in a situation where you're facing the possibility of a hysterectomy, you want to be prepared. This is not something to take lightly because for one, we all know somebody who's had a hysterectomy and everybody has different reactions to it. It can go in so many different directions. It can be quite unpredictable it can be very very painful if it doesn't if you're one of the unlucky ones for whom it doesn't go well okay so you want to make sure that um, you ask 
questions, have a conversation, and just ask whatever questions come to mind because no question is stupid when it comes to your health. And make sure that you get answers so that you can make the decision that makes the most sense for you, okay? And again, also make sure that you explore your alternatives. And these alternatives don't necessarily only have to be diet and herbs. You can also have alternatives, uh, medical alternative treatments presented to you make sure that those are presented and explored to you so that again, you only have a radical surgery when you actually need it, okay? And make sure next that you have a plan. Have a plan A, plan B, plan C. Have as many plans as you need, but literally plan for everything. Just not just the recovery, but literally long-term. Like think about all the possibilities of how is this going to affect your life on a day-to-day -day basis? How is this potentially going to affect uh, maybe your spouse or your children because again everybody has different reactions to it and for some women it ends up being um, more of a it could be the weight gain it could be mood swings it could be cognitive functions there could be so many things but just have backup plans as best as you can if you are somebody that you, if you think that you are going to use hrt then do your research on that if you think that you want to investigate herbs and how you can use herbs go see an herbalist before your surgery so that you can understand the options in terms of herbs and what's out there for you, okay? And remember that even with all the amazing uh, things that you can do with herbs, an herb is not going to replace an organ, right? So again, I, I sometimes feel like, um, you know, if we were to have surgery on the part of our body that is external, right? Somebody's going to come chop off the, our fingers or amputate us, you know, uh, at the wrist. Like we... It would hit us in the face the enormity of that decision but i think that when it comes to reproductive organs because we don't see them they're not outside of us um it is all presented as something that you know you can live without it but just because you can live without it still doesn't mean you know you it's good for you right because all you can do maybe is survive without your uterus but you, you may not necessarily thrive and here we're talking about thriving Ideally, and if you have had the surgery again, your diet, herbs, those are going to help you tremendously. Lifestyle changes, things that you can do to, to uh, reduce stress, supporting and regulating your nervous system that can also be beneficial in different ways. Because as I just pointed out, that we are basically changing a connection between you know the nervous system and um, our organs so that is that can have an impact if we remove an organ the body now has to sort of recalibrate and refigure things out because an organ that it depended on is no longer there and is forever not coming back so that can take a toll on your body okay and just to wrap this up um, this basically also the reason i made this video is because um, I had a what was definitely my most challenging client and not challenging because of her but challenging because of the situation she found found herself and so she'd had a hysterectomy she also had a history of type 2 diabetes those things two things together are not easy to work with and she had been managing her diabetes um, just with diet for a very 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 long time and unfortunately when she had a hysterectomy all of a sudden her blood sugar um, went out of control, the weight, mood swings, other things, everything changed significantly. But again, you know, her real frustration was the fact that she had had a handle on her type 2 diabetes using diet and the surgery unfortunately threw things off for her, okay? So by the time that we worked together, you know, her blood sugar was skyrocketing a lot. Um, her vision was getting impacted because of the elevated blood sugar levels. Luckily, you know, she was very, very willing and ready to do whatever it takes. She had a lot of courage to push through with not with sort of just making dietary changes. And so um, within what two weeks, within two weeks, she moved her blood sugar from about 260 to down to maybe about 160. I think she dropped about 100 points within two weeks. Another two weeks after that, her blood sugar was much better down into like the 120s and 110s. So she was getting closer, much closer to a healthier place. Her vision cleared up. You know, this is a scary situation for anybody, right? So it can, again, this is just to remind you, it can go in so many directions. So, you know, 
if it's you that is facing the possibility of this, take your time to investigate. Share this video with other women, whether it's your daughter, your sister, whomever your friends, but share this with them so they just have some more material because unfortunately there's not a ton of research either out there on hysterectomies, on the side effects, on how to manage it. There really is not a ton of research. So the two things that I mentioned, you know, the one study that I mentioned to you at the time when it was released was considered pretty groundbreaking because there is just not a ton of information. It's almost like you have to go get this permanent and irreversible surgery to then figure out if it works for you or not, which is kind of not what you want to do. You don't want to use yourself as a live guinea pig. So if you are currently dealing with the side effects of a hysterectomy and you're looking for ways to basically support your body holistically, then I have left a link to join my newsletter below this video. Once you join, then you can get access to my weekly broadcast and all the different classes that I offer. You can learn more about my one-on-one -on -one coaching and different ways that I can support you on your journey. Okay. So if you found this information in this video helpful, then give it a like and a thumbs up, share it of course. And if you have questions, comment, don't hesitate to leave them below. I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. In the meantime, I want to wish you a lovely day and a happy new year, and I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.